Okay, this is on the kitchen job, number 54160. Install on, I believe, 6-2 by Aaron. I'm um, gonna have to verify that. Okay. So, what we're doing is, we are replacing this furnace, coil, and AC, and a basement finish. Um, okay, so the new furnace will sit two and three quarter inch from the two by four wall. And um, it will sit one and a half inches from the back two by four wall. Okay, furnace will sit on a base, duct this at the shows canvas and then a starting collar sorry it's just a transition your starting collars are going to have to be triangles so you're going to have two four by four um, starting collars 16 inches long and one's just going to go right here um, the other one is going to go behind the furnace here. You're going to have to get rid of the wood. You have uh, you know, inch and a half and then three and a half. So your starting collar is going to be all the way out to here. So you're going to have to just get rid of this wood. Um, while I'm here, while, well, yeah. Um... Okay, and filter box, and same with same thing with this starting collar. It's going to be 45 degrees back, so it's going to um, go back four inches. Cut line right here from side to side. This cut line's right there. I have a. Uh, five inches here. So your four inch starting collar with one inch out will fit right in the S-lock. Okay. So this duct here, it sits three inches past this duct, you know, right where this gas is. Um, it's gonna offset over three inches and then drop. So this drop's gonna be in our way, FYI. Um, combustion air is okay, right there. So the vent, you're going to remove the flex and add um, I gave you, this one I gave you, and I gave you a few extras because with the gas moving over you may have to do a little something else. But um, that's what I had planned, then if you need to modify. Um, so the gas, you're gonna remove and reuse this drop. So you're gonna put a new uh, one inch close nipple here, and then a four inch piece, and then a 90, and then reuse this drop. And you can just kind of make that four inch wherever you need. If you need to go this way with it and then down or kind of at an angle and then down. But yeah, just reuse this drop and reuse all the stuff for the water heater. And reuse to this caulk. So from this caulk, you're going to add... A four inch, a T3 cap flex and 14 inch into the furnace. Okay. AC, we'll go over in a minute. Your drain, just to the floor. Your uh, duct should come right up to the front of it, but it shouldn't cover it. Standard order. Thermostat, 
just put in a Lennox C57500. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's what we're putting in. Blower, sorry, power. Um, reuse box and switch. I'll give you a couple connectors for flex. Okay, so you're gonna add starting collars and add veins in the 90 degree in the hole. So when you have this open, reach inside here and slide some veins in here and screw them in. <coughs> okay. Um, the AC, we're gonna flush the lines. Gonna replace um, all the split Rubitex inside and out. So, just know on Lance's jobs, he's, well, on everyone's jobs, they're picky about that, but especially Lance. So, just make sure you have clean Rubitex on your line sets that you can replace it with. If you need me to start ordering you Rubitex for jobs, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to trust that you have them, have it with you on the job with the copper okay um okay so the existing breaker comes from outside let's just go out walk outside real quick <coughs> um the existing breaker is a 30 amp It comes from this panel, so it's the right size breaker. Um, Lance said to replace the disconnect and the whip, so we'll have to hire an electrician to come screw a new disconnect on the wall. Um, well, that breaker size is okay. Um, I'm going to order you a new pad. I'm going to order a 36 by 36 pad so you can have room behind it. Um, but notice it's all sunk here and, and stuff. So you'll have to backfill this. There's plenty of dirt behind the house here that you can take dirt to backfill that. Um, okay. All right, well, that's it on the uh, furnace install, but now we're finishing the basement. So, let's go down. Okay, we have a bedroom here, bathroom, bedroom. So, bedroom behind the furnace, bathroom, then that bedroom. We have the bed, I call it the monitor room, then the living room. So, in the first bedroom behind the furnace, um, he has us just cutting a 4x12 supply in at the end of the duct um, into the bottom of the thing. He actually has 4x10, but since we have to cut this in, I'm going to do inside clinch. So it's actually going to be a 4x10 hole with a 4x12 duct. So when you have the furnace ripped out, um, I would slide a tape measure down there 
and measure where the end of the duct is and that way you'll know where to cut this in okay and so this is supply then we have a return air that goes right here we're going to do the same thing here but with the 4 by 12 um, return just in the ceiling there as per instructions unless Okay, in this bedroom, he has a 4x10 over here. Um, so it's going to have to go in this bay here, right here. So in this room, you'll probably have to cut out some sheetrock here. And then cut out the bottom of the duct. I gave you a 16x16 16 16 patch. And then cut a top takeoff out of the top. Um, chances are you're going to be able to knock out this header and do all this from the top but you won't have to cut out the sheetrock but that's what he has on the scope so um, I gave you a patch just in case but try to do it from knocking this header out just cutting a hole like normal but yeah then run your pipe down so hopefully slide it down without cutting any of this sheetrock and cut a 4x10 here on the return air, um, his scope doesn't have a return air in here, but I'm sure he meant to put one because it has to have one. Um, but we're just going to put a 4x12 um, ducked up and tap into the bottom of the return air right above the door. Um, okay. Okay, so the next room is the monitor room. Okay, so that was bedroom one, bedroom two. Then the monitor room, we're going to put a four by 10 and we're gonna put an eight by eight return air. So to do that, here's your supply air here. Um, I don't know if you could, this is combustion air. Yeah. I don't know if you can maybe slide the combustion air over and get a six inch. Well, no, that wouldn't work because it goes all the way out and need room for a boot. So you might have to do it right here at this angle here. You have gas line and power line, might be able to fit one over here but with that power line you may not be able to may have to go in this one or all the way over into that one that puts it right next to the wall this one kind of puts it over the window if you want in this one it'll put it right here so yeah i'd say go in this one Anyway, um, and you're going to have to, you know, just slide the pipe down the sheetrock like the last one. I'd put the boot on the end of the pipe and slide it down, put another piece of pipe on, slide it down, and hopefully you make it to the end. <laughs> okay, the return air, we're just going to put an 8x8 eight eight, um, here as close to the door as we can. 8x8 eight eight flat. Um, <sighs> the 
Um, sorry, I was in deep thought. Um, but to get it there, we're going to feed it by a six inch round. The duct doesn't go all the way there. If we came off where this duct is, return our duct is, would be in the closet. So we'll have to take a six inch round off the end cap, come over, um, and up and out. Um, wherever you can, probably, you know, you probably come out on the right side of the door, you know, right here over the door. Because you have a vent there and that's going to be our heat run, heat run and anyway. Or you could come in this one with the return air. Where the gas line is, that would probably work best. Yeah. Okay, and then in the big living room, we have three six inch um, runs. Gonna put um, evenly spaced two on this wall here with angle boots, and then one with an end boot over this um, window area. So six inch top take off, six inch top take off, six inch top take off. <coughs> Okay, um, here in the hallway, we're going to put a 30 by 8 baseboard grill. So to do that, on the furnace side, we have this return air right here. We're going to put a 8 by 8, 33 inch long return air collector. And then we're going to pan both sides of the wall as per scope. Um, so this one, this side, I give you a 60 inch piece. I don't know where my dang folder is. Well, I give you two 60 inch pieces but then on uh, <clears throat> on this side, I give you the 33 inch tall piece. And on this side, I'll give you the smaller one because we're gonna hold it up because of the return air ring. So we don't need to go all the way to the floor. You know, that's why I made it um, 21. But, um, what else? That's it. My thoughts were, it, well, I don't want to leave a voice out. Well, yeah, we'll voice it. Yeah. Well. Okay. I'm going to change the return airs in two of those bedrooms. Because I can. Well, I'll leave it. That's what the scope says to do. Um, well, if I decide to change it, I'll talk to the salesman. Um, so this first bedroom behind the furnace, rather than put a return air in the ceiling, we could take it off the back of the return air drop um, and pan down the wall and just put a, you know, a regular baseboard grill on. 
uh, 14 by 8 low. <clears throat> Let's take a six inch round here. Just tap into the back. Actually, that can't be. That'd have to be an eight by eight. So we only have ten inch in between the studs. <clears throat> Yeah, six inch 90 and just tap it into the pan. And <clears throat> on this one, um, we could, sorry, the monitor room, if we decide we can take six inch round up and over and then um, 45 down and then just tap into the wall and seal it and use the wall space and get a return air low here. So. Um, in this room, it's got to be in the ceiling. There's no other way to do it. But, okay, well. Um, look for your parts. If you have a... Uh, Yeah, let, we're just going to make those return air low. Return airs low in those two rooms I talked about. Um, I'm going to make the change here, and that's the way it should be. Thanks.